What's good, y'all? It's your boy Ross back at it again with another video. So, we're gonna check out 10 wrestlers who worked through serious injuries by Parts of Unknown featuring uh, Pete Quinnell. Um, much respect to any wrestler that's able to finish a match with an injury, a serious injury. We've seen it uh, with Triple H. Triple H has been known for finishing matches with injuries. Uh, we've seen it recently with Cody Rose wrestling with a torn pec. It looked brutal in a Hell in a Cell match at that. Just insane. And just insane to me, man. And anyone that's able to wrestle with an injury, kudos to you, man. Respect to what you guys do in the ring and to, you know, be able to endure all that intense pain just for entertainment. So we're going to check this out, man. Appreciate all the love and support you guys for showing on the channel, man. Let's do this thing. Oh, this is a cheery subject, isn't it? In times gone by, it was much more acceptable after you get injured in the ring to keep on working, brother. Though nowadays, thankfully, that sort of mindset is much less common. Once you get injured, just stop wrestling. Stop it. Regardless, though, there have been some very notable instances in wrestling history of wrestlers working through severe injuries. Oh, mankind. Crazy Mick people. Foley, gotta put him in there, to too. List them. Don't try this at home. I'm Chopper Pete Quinnell from Parts of Unknown, and this is 10 wrestlers who worked through serious injuries. Before we get into the list, consider subscribing to the channel. If subscribe you to Parts of Unknown if you haven't have already. More of them, and already. I've been have subscribed to them for, the for a minute is. now. Like, like lots of them. Loads. Just so many lists. Subscribe. Number 10, Chris Jericho's broken arm. Mm. In 1994, two years prior to his move to WCW, Jericho spent some time working for Jim Cornette's Smoky Mountain Wrestling, where he worked as one half of the Thrill Seekers tag team alongside compatriot Lance Storm. On August 5th, 1994, at the Knoxville Coliseum in Tennessee, Jericho was practicing spots prior to his and Storm's tag team street fight contest against the Heavenly Bodies, Tom Pritchard and Jimmy Del Rey. One of the spots he was practicing was a shooting star press off the top rope. However, it did not go to plan, with Jericho under-rotating and attempting to break his fall with his right arm, only for it to snap like a twig oh. under the force of the fall. Jericho, despite the horrific injury, wasn't oh. content to call it a night and proceeded to the incredibly bloody street fight contest. Jericho also later suffered from a botched blade job that led him to lose a ton of blood, claiming the reason was medication being given to him following the arm break that just happened to also be blood thinners. Jim Cornette later claimed he simply bladed too hard with his weak left hand. Either way, Jericho had a rough night and quite rightly vetoed the shooting star from his offense after this. Oh Number my nine. god, I did not know that. Holy crap, Jericho, a tough SOP. You're wrestling with a broken arm in a street fight match type situation. Um, look, bro. Once again, that's why I show nothing but respect to wrestlers, bro. Doesn't matter what company you wrestle for. I show respect to you because you're doing some things I can never and would never ever do. Much respect. John Cena's torn triceps. Few wrestlers possess the superhuman healing abilities of Facts. John Cena, famously bouncing back from a torn pec within a fraction of his estimated recovery yeah, time. Yeah, which is ridiculous. 2008. This Terminator-like determination makes it no real surprise that he was willing to go into his SummerSlam 2013 WWE mm -hmm. World Championship I forgot about with Daniel Bryan while having a literal tennis ball-sized lump sticking out of the back of his arm. I forgot Cena all about that. Cena surgery in order to give Bryan the rub in the memorable main event. Yeah. Cena was forced to wear an incredibly hefty elbow pad to help him through the pain. However, given the match was over 26 minutes long, this was a great match too. Phone it in, producing a truly great contest that was crucial in beginning Brian's ascent towards mega stardom in late 2013 uh -huh. and early 2014. I forgot he was injured After during SummerSlam, that match. Cena was estimated to be out for four to six months. However, in typical Cena fashion, yep. he returned in just two months and eight days to appear at October 2013. Which is insane. Cell against I don't know what he's Rio. made of. <laughs> quite he's not human. Machine, and it's not even fair. How is that possible? I don't know. Number eight, Hiroshi Tanahashi's torn biceps. The ace of New Japan, Hiroshi Tanahashi, has suffered many injuries in recent years, carrying problems with his neck, knees, and elbow, the latter of which he underwent surgery for in April 2019. However, one injury he decided to neglect surgery for, despite being advised to, was a rupture of the distal tendon in his right bicep. Damn. The injury was sustained during the Ring of Honor New Japan crossover show, War of the Worlds, in May 2017. According to the American Academy of Orthopedic Surgeons, surgery for a biceps tendon tear can be avoided, providing the individual doesn't immediately need full arm function. Hmm. Uh, I'm not quite sure professional wrestling is yeah. a profession that fits that criteria, yeah. Hiroshi. 
Tanahashi would return to the ring little over a month after the injury at the Dominion show on June 6, 2017, defeating Tetsuya Naito for a second IWGP Intercontinental Championship. Tanahashi would not undergo surgery for the injury and instead work his usual schedule from June onwards. He would later admit that this was a mistake, but insisted he could not take the time off. What a nutter. Wow. Stop, stop it. Hiroshi, stop it. Yeah, Number seven. Man, I'm all for you taking time off to heal your body, bro. Because you only get one body. <laughs> so, jeez. Finn Balor's torn labrum. In the summer of 2016, the WWE was undergoing some serious changes, reverting back to a hard draft split for the first time since 2011. Finn Balor was picked fifth overall for Raw from NXT mm -hmm. and immediately thrusted into the main event scene, yep. defeating Roman Reigns to earn a shot at becoming the inaugural WWE Universal Champion against Seth Rollins at SummerSlam 2016. Mm -hmm. The match was set to be Balor's coronation and solidify him as the man for the new era of Monday nights. During the match, Rollins did his often scary-looking buckle bomb spot, only this time he directed Balor towards the barricade instead. Yep, and Balor this is where he got injured. break his fall with his right arm, only to land extremely awkwardly and tear his labrum as a result. Ooh. Balor, like the trooper he is, would immediately pop his shoulder back into place that's, enough to wrestle for a further 15 minutes, insane. and that's himself the only world title so far of his WWE career. Yep. Unfortunately, however, Balor would relinquish the strap the following night on Raw, never reaching the same heights in WWE. WWE again. What a story. That, bro, that injury derailed him so much. So that's why I like recently they had this interaction between Seth Rollins and Finn Balor. I like that interaction when he talked about that because that pretty much killed his push. It killed his push. Like, he was never the same again after that. Like, Vince kind of just strayed away from him after that. Number six, Kenny Omega's vertigo and everything. Similarly to Tanahashi, Kenny Omega's body had been suffering from a lot of wear and tear by 2021. Uh -huh. Wrestling at such a frenetic, hard-hitting pace for years had left Omega with many niggling issues. Most scarily of all, though, was his bout of vertigo that had affected him since facing Kazuchika Okada in the semi-finals of the G1 in 2017. Damn. Omega stated that following a dropkick that saw Okada land on Omega's temple on the follow-through, something had been misplaced in his neck that has Damn. led to problems with vertigo ever since. As well as the vertigo, Omega stated in an interview with Fightful in June 2022 that the list of things that needed fixing in his body was just too long, making it even more remarkable that he worked almost the entirety of 2021 as AEW World Champion seriously hurt. Omega did eventually take nine months off after dropping his AEW World title in order to heal and correct knee, shoulder, and abdominal injuries and Jesus undergo multiple Christ. surgeries to do so. Just a shame that his comeback was derailed by saving Larry the dog during Brawl Out, I suppose. Yeah, man. Uh, much respect to Kenny Omega. I did hear reports that he had so many nagging injuries that he was just working through. Some people are not fans of him. Obviously, y'all know <laughs> Jim Cornette's not a big fan of Kenny Omega. But once again, I'm still going to always show respect to someone that's willing to work through all these nagging injuries just to entertain us, man. Five. Kurt Angle's all yeah, oh yeah, neck his problems. neck issues. We all know that Kurt yep. Angle won Olympic gold with a broken, broken freaking, freaking neck. neck. However, given the notoriety of his first, it's easy to forget that Kurt would go on to suffer a further four. That's right, four more neck breaks over <sighs> the course of his WWE Christ, career. The first bro. of these four would come at oh No Way Out 2003. Four? Angle, I didn't even know that. Pal Shelton Benjamin and Charlie Haas. I did not know Mark that. Lesnar and Chris Benoit in a three-on-two handicap tag match. During the match, Lesnar would Irish whip Angle into the turnbuckle hard, which resulted in Angle's neck whiplashing and breaking. Oh Not only would Angle finish the match, Jesus but he would also Christ. postpone surgery in order to still compete in the WrestleMania Gee, 19 Gee, I did not know that. Lesnar Holy! Lesnar. Angle would undergo surgery following Mania, but would be back winning the WWE title once again just four months later at Vengeance 2003, only for Brock to once again break his neck with a chair shot a few months later Jesus Christ. Jesus, stop. In fairness to Lesnar, Angle blamed this on rushing back too early before his neck was ready, but that was still a rough year for Kurt. Um, Number four, Shawn Michaels hernia. That's fucking it. <laughs> I know we ended up getting Perk Angle uh, in TNA because he was just drugged up just to deal with the pain, but Jesus. I don't even know what to say to that. When you break your neck that many times, Doing what you love. I, I, Someone has to step in and say, hey, bro, 
you may just want to just chill. Just take a year off. I know it's going to be tough, but you got to chill. This is, it's not like you break in like a finger, even though that could be painful too. It's your neck. <laughs> like, I, I, don't, I don't even know what to say to that. That's David insane. Disc. One of the most historically important injuries of all time came at Royal Rumble 1998, where WWF champion Shawn Michaels was defending his title against The Undertaker in a casket match. Coming on the same night as Steve Austin's second straight Rumble win, plans were for Michaels to retain and proceed into the Mania main event program with Austin and a wild Mike Tyson. Mm -hmm. However, these plans were put in serious jeopardy when during the match, Taker would throw Michaels over the top rope, clipping his lower back off yeah. the big box on his way to the floor. While painful looking at the time, the severity of the injury was not immediately evident. However, Michaels had in fact herniated two discs in his back mm. and completely crushed a third. Oh! Somehow, Michaels would wrestle on and oh! complete the match, going oh, on to insane. defend his title and pressing forward with the feud with Austin going into Mania 14. Michaels would impressively compete in the Mania main event in a 20-minute match, but would appear visibly uncomfortable throughout. Tragically, the injury would force Michaels to retire during the peak of his powers following yep. the match with Austin. Thankfully, though, he would return in 2002 and have an even better eight-year run, so it all worked out in the end. Number That's three, insane, Cody bro. Rhodes' torn pet. Of course, this was going to be on the list. Cody Rhodes had been riding a wave of momentum sky high following his incredible WWE return at WrestleMania 38 in Dallas. Following up one banger with Seth Rollins with another a month later at WrestleMania Backlash, with a third in the series seemingly set to conclude the rivalry mm -hmm. inside Hell in a Cell. Unfortunately, however, just prior to the event on June 6th, it was being reported that Cody had suffered a serious torn pectoral injury while working out. Despite this, the match wasn't changed or called off, leading <laughs> questions over the severity of Cody's condition. But, oh boy, boy how would he want to be The moment Cody God. made his entrance, it was evident that he could barely lift his right arm at all. But it was only when he removed his ring jacket that the damage was visible for everyone to see. Oh Words God, can't really bro. do it justice. I mean, just look at it. Bro. That is not what a pick. Bro. When we did our live stream reactions on the main page, and he took off his coat, and you saw that. And all you heard was the crowd just gasping, like, holy, like, this is not fake. He is legit injured out there in a hell in a cell. You got Seth Rollins laughing, healing it up as he should. The crowd for the first few minutes was just in shock. Like, they were just, like, we didn't know what, what we were about to watch here. Like, it was uncomfortable. And it made sense because it's in a hell in a cell. It's supposed to be uncomfortable. This is probably one of the most uncomfortable hell in a cell moments ever. Because we knew he was in real pain. And the discoloration of it lets you know this was going to be a long night for him. Anytime. Anytime there was any type of uh, move done to that area of his body, it, we just winced in pain for him. That's why I can't wait for him to come back because he's going to get a thunderous pop and be a ultra mega baby face because he literally went out there and gave us a, a great match with one arm. Incredible. Pectoral or arm is supposed to look like. It never gets any easier to see. Rhodes would somehow compete for nearly 25 minutes Incredible. and take further damage at the hands of Rollins. It truly was hard to watch, but was honestly a star-solidifying moment for Mega Rollins, star. who despite That's... having to miss the rest of the year as a result, will look to return and pick up where he left off, hopefully at the beginning of 2023. Hopefully, Number two, man. Triple H's torn quad and crushed Just, throat. Yep. Two decades prior to Rhodes' performance, his self-proclaimed favorite wrestler, sure thing, Cody, Triple H was <laughs> a benchmark for toughness in a wrestling ring. Yep. During a tag team match pitting Triple H and Steve Austin against Chris Benoit and Chris Jericho on Raw in May 2001, the game would suffer a gruesome torn quadricep while breaking up a Walls of Jericho on Stone Cold. Even worse, Trips would then go on to receive the walls just moments afterwards. A truly <laughs> insane thing to consider doing. Hunter would somehow finish the match, but would be out of action until January the following year as a result. To even come back at all was remarkable. As Triple H detailed in his appearance on the Talk is Jericho podcast, he was told that he may never wrestle again. 
Remarkably, less than a year from his torn cord return, Triple H had an even scarier injury. Coming into the elimination first chamber, ever elimination yep. chamber at Survivor Series 2002, Hunter would fall victim to a five-star frog splash from the top <laughs> of the chamber pod from Rob Van Dam. However, a fault in it. And I believe he tore his quad. Uh, uh, I believe he tore his uh, his uh, his quad again. Uh, I want to say. Correct me if I'm wrong. Was it New Year's Revolution, y'all? DX versus Rated RKO. He ended up tearing his quad during the match and still finished it. Correct me if I'm wrong. I believe that's what happened as well. Execution saw RVD's knee land on Triple H's throat upon landing. Despite barely Oh, and he tore his, his pec uh, during the Brothers of Destruction versus DX match. He tore his pec then, too. Jesus. And com completed the match. Once again, soldiered on. Going until the final two of the match. Just completing the matches with the all these injuries. He spend the night is in hospital as a ridiculous. Due to the dangerous levels of swelling in his throat. But thankfully, his trachea was not torn and he was able to make a full return a few weeks later. But Jesus Christ. Bro, Triple if you H can't is... breathe, don't wrestle. And He's number tough one, SLB. Mick Foley's everything. everything in King of the Ring. <laughs> there can Facts. only really be one option yep. for the top spot on this list. Yep. The it infamous made sense. Hell in a Cell at King of the Ring 1998. Beginning on top of the Just, cell, the oh, was bro. almost over as soon as it started, when Taker threw Foley oh from the top God, of the cell bro. all the way to the announce table below. This wasn't any Shane McMahon WrestleMania 32 crash pad table nope, situation. No crash pad. This was a legitimately insanely dangerous spot that would have ended the contest immediately for 99.99% of the roster just not Mick Foley. Nope. Foley unbelievably would return to the summit of the cell Fucking only to insane. once again plummet to the floor. This time choke slammed to the ring below. The impact caused some of Foley's teeth to be lodged through his <laughs> mouth, famously oh being visible poking through his oh nostril towards the end of the match. <laughs> Despite so suffering from insane. a dislocated jaw God. and shoulder, a concussion, <laughs> internal bleeding, oh ribs, and God. puncture wounds from the two insane bumps, oh Foley God, continued the bro. match, only to eventually be finished off by Taker <laughs> following another choke slam, this time on thumbtacks, oh, and finally a dark. tombstone pile driver. It is sheer lunacy what Foley went through and undoubtedly solidified his legend forever. Facts. While Vince McMahon was thankful for Foley's performance in the match, he was told never to do that again. No. While Foley didn't quite take Vince's advice to heart, yeah. leading to death defy numerous times afterwards, it's easy to say that we will never see a performance quite like King of the Ring nope. ever again. And that's not really a bad thing. No, it's not. And that's <laughs> Did we miss nah, any bro. Uh, Mick Foley deserves to be number one in that spot because we won't see that again. I don't want to see that again. The dude literally fell from the top of the cell to, through the announce table to the cement floor. No crash pad. Got back up. Climbed the, the structure again to only fall through the, uh, the top of the cell. I believe that wasn't supposed to happen. The, the, the cage opening and falling through, he wasn't supposed to fall through that. I think that's what reports were saying. That wasn't supposed to happen. So when he fell through, I want y'all to understand, that ring is hard. He fell straight through, ended up teeth lodging through his, his mouth straight to his nose. Dude was in probably immense amount of pain and still wrestled a match to fall through some thumbtacks. I, I just... He lost the match, but he won everybody over. That will be one of the most, it's actually one of the most replayed moments of all time in wrestling history. It doesn't matter if you're a fan of WWE. You cannot say you haven't seen this moment if you just watch wrestling. This is, it's insanity. Insanity. And this is why I always and forever will say I have much respect to wrestlers. I may not like your booking decisions on how you're booked in certain situations, but I will never sit up there and disregard what they do for our entertainment. So comment down below. Let me know what's your, I guess, the craziest wrestling spot you've ever seen that you know for a fact someone was injured right afterwards. Let me know down below. But I appreciate all the love and support you guys shown on the channel. Road to 100K. Appreciate y'all kicking with me. See y'all next one. Peace.